Today we're going to talk about workbenches. One of the first things you're going to probably build for yourself is going to be a small workbench. So I want to talk about what makes a small workbench still very useful. So let's take a look at a factory one. A lot of people like these little benches, and I like mine, because it's lightweight and you can fold it up. But there's some other things about it that make it quite useful. You have the ability to clamp things in the middle of the table, and it's not very tippy, even though it's a small bench. It doesn't want to try to fall over. And if you look, it's because the legs are at the same plane is the edge of the table. So that inherently makes it not want to fall over. But also allows you to clamp all the way around the edge of the table, which is about the most useful thing to have in a welding bench. So I want to build a 2 by 4 foot bench. This is going to be a gift. I have the opinion that a 3 8 top would be the minimum thickness. So this piece is half an inch thick. I have a bunch of material laying around from other jobs, so I bought this piece brand new. These pieces are brand new, but they were, they were from another job that have been laying around. And these pieces are used. So you can make the legs out of whatever you want. You would never buy 4 inch Schedule 80 to make a workbench this small out of, but that's, that's what I have, so that's what we're going to use. If you were going to actually buy stuff, you'd probably buy square tubing. It's easier to work with. And I'm going to use this channel for the frame underneath the table. And again, you would never use channel iron this big. I think this is 6 or 8 inch channel. But I have it laying around. So that's what's going to happen. So if we look at this uh, bench we want to build, you can imagine that if we put the leg right at the edge so it didn't want to tip over and then we run our if we ran our frame right here at the edge there'd be nowhere to clamp at the very edge of the table and would lose functionality and it would be very annoying so it's already very annoying to have a bench that's too small so you want to try to make it as useful as possible so what I want to do is push this leg in inch and a half, two inches or so, and run that frame back from the edge of the table. But that's going to make the table really tippy having the legs that close together. So I'm going to cut these, tu these tubes at an angle and kick the legs out. So they might, maybe if they don't match, maybe even out a little bit farther than the edge of the table to keep it from tipping over. And when you're talking about four legs, you're going to have to have some kind of a leveling foot. So we're going to have adjustable leveling feet on this. We're going to have a frame underneath the table. I think that's very important when you start beating on it. It makes it much more rigid. And we're going to have some holes in the top to mimic these slots to allow you to clamp in the center of the table. I'll have to see where the frame hits and then I'll decide where to stick some 5 8 holes in the top of this. Let's talk about workflow on a job like this. A cut like this takes quite a while, so I have a saw right next to where I'm working. I'm building this on the floor because that's what you might have to do if you don't have a workbench yet. And right next to my grinder, so I can always keep that saw cutting. I'm close enough to it if something happens, I'll hear it. The main holdup of this job is going to be that saw, so I want to keep it running. I'm also going to use a six inch grinder. You can get a lot more work done with a six inch grinder than you can with a four and a half. And I'm just 
nipping the corner off of these pipe welds because this is complete overkill. There's no reason to put a full penetration weld on something like this. And also, if you have two pieces of tubing cut at exactly the same angle when you put them together, yeah, it'll fit perfectly. So the more the angle, the more exaggerated things get. So that fits perfectly. Now, if you were to put it, it's only an 11 degree cut. So if you were to put it on a 90 degree cut, it, it fits pretty close. But I'm going to try to line it up the best I can. The bandsaw blade just uh, self-destructed. So when you get your new bandsaw blade, it comes with zip ties on it. So the best way to... Now this one's got a uh, plastic guard on it. They don't, know how, they don't always have that. So cut the zip tie, hold on to it, cut the zip ties, and then just throw it. And that way you won't get cut. So this puts the edge of the leg right at the corner of the table. And I'm going to put the adjusting foot right here on the outside edge. Make it real hard to upset this thing. It's starting to take shape. I'm welding around these pipes at 120 amps with pulse MIG. 120 amps, 030 wire, we're running 92.8. When I weld to a nut, I like to have a bolt screwed in it when I'm welding. It seems like it keeps it round as it cools. And I'm putting these leveling feet all the way to the corner, make it harder to tip over. And I like using these carriage bolts because it gives you a nice roundy head. And then you've got the flat spots. It's got the flat spots for a wrench. You have a nice smooth place for your floor. If you're trying to measure in between two points, measure out 10 inches on one side and mark it. And measure to your mark and add 10. 24 and a quarter, 34 and a quarter. Here's where you can turn this whole job sideways. When you're welding a frame to the tabletop, I turned the welder down to 100 amps for these welds. And you can see I didn't put very much weld there. If you put too much heat here, it'll bend the top of the table. The way we're looking at it, it'll bend it toward us. But when the table's the right side around, the edge of the table will be bent down and you'll be very upset. So just take it easy when you're hooking the tabletop to the frame. I got dark on me, but that's all right. Here at Welder Skills, there's no messing around. So I'm going to hit this table with some abrasive media. I don't have to get too crazy. I just got to get this loose stuff off of there. So this really won't take too long with a sandblaster. I'm going to use uh, coal slag. It's uh, approved anti-dust 
whatever. So this would be better for the environment and all that. And this is a pretty decent sized sandblaster. It'll hold three bags of sand, so I think it's a 300 pound capacity, but you usually only get about 150 pounds in it. And we're running it off the service truck. I've got a 135 CFM compressor in the truck. Should make short work of this job. I just wanted to take a minute and tell you about Welder Skills, where you can find more videos like these. Welder Skills is a top notch instructional welding platform from Jody Collier of Welding Tips and Tricks. It's got great community features and videos on just about every type of welding project you can think of, from experienced welders with varied backgrounds. We are all adding videos on a regular basis, and we've got a great mobile app for iOS and Android with all the same features. If you want to try things out first, there's a free seven day trial that'll get you full access to a huge library of welding videos from me, Jody Collier, and other talented, experienced welders. If you want to see my latest projects, ask me questions about what I'm working on, and support my videos more directly, go sign up for Welder Skills. You can get a big discount if you sign up for a year. Back to the show. Okay, we're gonna paint this thing. I hope everybody loves Ford Tractor Gray, because that's what I got laying around. This is a PPG, uh, not sponsored, it's just the kind of paint that I use because it never lets me down. It's a direct to metal paint, so the primer is built in. It's very thick, you put it on heavy, and in one shot you got it. It's activated with different kinds of hardeners. Uh, I've got this uh, 3501. Uh, it's, this makes it really thick, but it's an excellent hardener, it makes it for a very Adorable finish, but it's hard to spray with this. Uh, this UA11 is a accelerator, so this will ensure that it's clear dry tomorrow. It should be dry to the touch in two hours, and by tomorrow morning it'll be done drying to the point where I can uh, handle things. And because this makes it so thick, I'm going to cut it with a little bit of acetone to get it to go through the spray gun. Now, these guns usually max PSI on these is like 40, um, I'm going to be running it closer to 100 because of this paint so thick. And anytime you're messing with activated paint, you've got to wear some kind of appropriate respirator. This was made for aerosols. This is not the same as a dust mask. This has charcoal in it to protect you from the oil aerosols. So this is, I think, five to one. This is a little bit of a dash, and then this is flavor to taste. Let's just see how it looks. Just add a little bit. I think 10% is the max you're supposed to add. And we'll put in a little tiny mixing cup. If you ever use one of these mixing cups, uh, you find the five to one. Well, there you go. There's your five to one already marked out. So I'll probably take it to here, and then the hardener. And a little dash of the accelerator, and then we'll add a little bit of acetone and see what it looks like. Okay, two tips. Clamp your gun holder to the bench, and put a little bit of solvent in your gun before you start, and make sure the gun's working. Because nothing sucks like dumping this thing full of paint, and then it starts running out of the gun because something's wrong with it. And nothing sucks like dumping this on the floor. That's why you need to clamp. Well, here's our concoction. Now, if you look at 
how thick that is. Uh, if, if this was auto body, you'd, you'd never run anything this thick. This is still pretty thick, even though I thinned it some. But we're running a primer gun, biggest primer gun I can find. It's a two and a half millimeter. And like I said, we're going to run this pretty high in the air pressure. And it'll work for our application. Well, it's a very sturdy little bench. I, mean, I, I think you could hook a vise to that and not have any trouble. So the only thing we're missing now is some hold down points here in the middle. So I've got four and a half inches of a lip here to clamp against. So I'm gonna run some holes down the center. I'm gonna run three rolls of the five eighths holes on four inch centers uh, here in the middle of the table. This is a shape I was playing around with on the bandsaw. It's a half inch plate. This is a three quarter inch fully threaded grade eight bolt. These are some grade eight nuts. So if you can imagine, this is a swivel. Got this from McMaster Car. This is a threaded swivel end. And this is a piece of five eighths rod out of a grade eight bolt. I'll try welding that in there. See if I can make a clamp. I've got a shim to center it. See how handy the edge of this bench is. Putting it to work already. Usually when you weld two nuts together, if you want it to run smooth, you've got to run a tap through it.
this pin definitely works, but I think this clamp will clamp a lot harder than what this pin will stand. So I think if you welded a nut, I mean a bolt on here, and put a nut underneath the table, you could probably clamp a lot harder. But for convenience, it's pretty handy.